Hello there! Chapter 3 of Fortnite is almost here. A new beginning fast approaches, and if the changes in between Chapter 1 and Chapter 2 is anything to go by, big things are coming very soon. Here's a look at 20 things which could be changing in the future, ranging from leaked updates which are inevitably coming to the game, things often requested by the community, and a few zany ideas which might be crazy enough to be possible. We have a lot to get through, so if you've sat your butt down for 10 minutes and slapped in code Adamaru, pretty please, let's find out what the future holds. New mechanics. After four years of building and shooting, we're pretty good at it right now, it's almost second nature to many of us. This has led to players wanting more, more things to do in each game. Chapter 2 has brought us fishing and swimming, and it looks like Chapter 3 is taking things even further. Leakers have found evidence of a new sliding mechanic soon to be unveiled, allowing us to shoot while sliding on our knees. Dodging a headshot like you're in the Matrix will definitely change up how people play. Other mechanics have been hinted at too, like riding animals. That gives us a use for those annoying raptors that always ruin my game. And then they've been testing a web shooter. Which leads perfectly onto my next point. It's time for Spider-Man to arrive. Since the very first Marvel collaboration, all we've wanted is Peter Parker to join us. If that web slinging mechanic is being worked on, as a leak suggests, then it's almost certainly time for Peter to show up. Here's something you may not know. Sony has a very tight hold on Spider-Man, and he is already signed to another video game, Marvel's Avengers, and he can't appear anywhere else until he finally arrives there. And guess what happened this week? Spider-Man finally arrived in Marvel's Avengers. It was a surprisingly quiet announcement, which to me signals that Spidey is ready to come to Fortnite next season. Alongside the new movie, which releases on December 15th here in the UK and the 17th around the world. So save up your V-Bucks and save the date for Spider-Man man's arrival. Another addition during Chapter 2 was the vehicles. The chopper didn't survive long, but the road vehicles are a permanent fixture. Game files have suggested that customization will be added to vehicles in the near future, with both a battering ram and a weapon mount looking very likely in Chapter 3. Here's something I wasn't expecting. A large amount of people have asked for a moving train to be on the next island. How epic would that be? This would mimic other games like GTA and other battle royales, with Warzone and Apex Legends the most recognisable. Epic have technically tested this with all the cube rolling this season. And if a train comes to Fortnite, you all know we have to get 100 players together and attempt to stop that train. Speaking of Apex Legends, one customization in that game allows players to choose a skydiving emote. These were and are very popular with that community and could add much needed variety to the Fortnite Battle Pass. Diving down to your drop spot while back flipping or drinking tea could be absolutely epic. And this is a little more closer to fruition as recently Superman was introduced with the first unique diving animation. Hey, and where are the wraps for cars and trucks? We all have a desire to customise our game and have everything exactly the way we want it. Can you even remember a time before back blings and weapon wraps? We can even wrap boats right now, but for some reason, we still can't choose to wrap the cars we drive. There are a few glitches like the exhaust pipes on the flatbed truck cabs and one in creative which lets us see entire vehicles decked out in the colours and textures of our wraps. Why isn't this officially in the game yet? It's great, it already exists, so it must be coming to Fortnite very soon. And that leads to another highly requested piece of customization: individual battle bus skins. The bus in the sky will always be the iconic blue to us, but actually it's been many different colours before. We've had a Christmas theme, a Halloween theme, a birthday theme, even Naruto's headband made an appearance. Oh no, I said Naruto wrong. Someone's gonna get butt hurt and cancel me. Sumimasen! Anyway, a custom battle bus would make so many players very happy, and guess what? It's already being tested by the developers, as leaks in the past have shown that it's hidden away in our locker screen already. So, what are your bets that it's coming next season? Custom battle buses. Something quite serious now, skill-based matchmaking. Many people are begging Epic to look into this as Fortnite's skill ceiling is much higher than other battle royales, all down to the building mechanic. Twitch streamer Squatting Dog has a very interesting way to fix this issue of being stranded in lobbies filled with scrimmers and losing the heart to play Fortnite. Mr. Dog puts forward a new metric which not only includes wins and kills but also building skill. This would mean if, like me, you don't build too much, we'd be placed in lobbies with similar players 
games with a similar playstyle. Those who prefer to run and gun then build the Taj Mahal. And those who love to scrim and be alone forever will be paired with players who enjoy that aspect of the game too. So therefore everyone would be happy, everyone feels more in control of their own destiny, and everyone plays more. What a classy solution, eh? All thanks to Mr. Dog. Much love everybody and mustache. There is actually another way to bridge the skill gap with building. It's something Epic is reportedly already working on yet again. Smart builds. This will scare the hell out of all the sweats around you, but an alleged Epic insider has said quick builds are coming in the future. These consist of one-click versions of something like a box and a roof. No skill needed, no spinning around on the spot, one click and you're done. There's a smart tower too to add another level to your build and even a smart bridge, just as you'd expect a ramp connecting floor pieces to get over a hazard. Whether these make it to the game or not is uncertain, but it's being tested. Honestly, what are your thoughts on this? Macro builds for everyone? Will that ruin Fortnite or improve it? Let's move on to changes in the game and in particular, a dynamic weather system. This theory is that by adding weather patterns like rain, thunder, bright sunshine and snow will give games a more realistic feel. At a base level, weather patterns will simply be a visual update, maybe with migrating goals that pass overhead. But should Epic want to, they could go much deeper into the weather system and make it a mechanic. Extremely bright sunshine could cause wooden builds to ignite. Thunderstorms could electrify metal structures. And should natural disasters be included, like in Battlefield, entire build-offs could be ripped to the ground in seconds. Unlike everything else we've spoken about, there is no evidence that this is in the works at all. Although the way fire spreads in the game right now, where it passes from one tile to another, uses the same scripting needed to make this a reality. And didn't we already get a hurricane-like effect in a recent live event? Hmm, not that far-fetched then. Another hugely requested change is actually something we've already had. The block. People want it back. The block was a place to showcase creative builds on the Battle Royale island. There was a giant tank one week, and the next it was some sort of 3D art. The block was a continually evolving POI made by people in the community. In-game it didn't always go to plan, with sometimes structures unable to render, and it caused many issues on different devices. But that was two years ago. Things have changed a lot since then, and Fortnite has evolved. What were your thoughts on the block? Would you like to see it return? Because I freaking love that monstrosity. Next, a second chance mechanic. Fortnite isn't afraid of taking ideas from other games and straight up stealing them and slapping them into Fortnite. For example, the reboot vans wouldn't be here without Apex Legends. Fortnite's closest competitor, Warzone, on the other hand, uses another system to let players rejoin the game if they die too early. This is the Gulag. Two defeated players fight off against one another to be put straight back into the match. A second chance, so to say. Epic has so far decided not to implement this in Fortnite, which is surprising as it's celebrated by a large amount of the community. A second chance for players who mess up their drop or can't find a weapon and die in the first 30 seconds. Yeah, that's usually me. And continuing from this, is it time to grow the lobbies in Fortnite? How do you feel about 150 player lobbies? We currently sit on 100 in each game. Battlefield 2042 has 128, and Warzone sits on a whopping 150, with 75 of those able to rejoin the game again, so effectively 225. But on the flip side, Apex Legend only has 60 players. In Fortnite at the moment, two thirds of the lobby is dead and gone by the time the second circle hits, with on average 36 players surviving 10 minutes in each game. This can make it hard to find other players to battle in the mid-game period. So more players should mean more battles. Is 150 player lobbies a good idea for Fortnite in Chapter 3? How about 200? Or would that be overkill? Okay, let's look at crossovers, and I'll share my data right away. Half of the people I asked wanted less crossovers, and half the people I asked wanted more crossovers. I kind of understand both sides of the argument, but let's be honest here. Collaborations and crossovers are here to stay. So let's look at a way to improve crossovers, and that's via POI changes. These look to be a staple of the new season when Gotham arrived and never left in Chapter 1, and then we had a full Marvel season in Chapter 2 with countless areas of those worlds brought into ours. Since then though, this has dropped off. Batman built a bat shed on the Fortnite island, but within a couple of weeks, that was reverted again. Now that the multiverse and omniverse is established in Fortnite lore, POI changes would be perfect. How about a Minecraft biome, for example? Maybe a Mako reactor from Final Fantasy VII? 
note to self when editing this, put a video of Tifa here because Tifa is great. I digress. Crossover points of interest would keep players returning to Fortnite as nobody could predict which part of the island would change and how it would change. Think back to Pandora in chapter one. The art style changed in just one biome. It was phenomenal. Here's a suggestion I wasn't expecting. Bring back loading screens. Let me put that another way. Loading screens that are relevant to the story. There are hundreds upon hundreds of loading screens in Fortnite. Some are fan art, some are renders with little relevance to the island, and some are key to evolving a character and fleshing out their history, all without words. For a good example of this, the entire story of the visitor is told in weekly loading screens from escaping the meteor to finding and building a rocket and taking us to a live event, all told in still images. Players who enjoy the lore of Fortnite would love these to return. Drift's time on the island has been presented via this method, leading to a better understanding of who he is. So who would have thought loading screens would be so important? Oh, do you remember this one? Weapon charms. Concepts for Fortnite weapon charms have been around for years. So much so that other games have released, added them and sold millions to their players whilst we wait in Fortnite. When season seven of chapter two arrived, there was a teaser which looked to be a weapon charm. It wasn't, it was another back bling, but the attention that got caused Epic to take note. As we already know, Fortnite's locker will be evolving in Chapter 3 to include brand new elements, making Weapon Charms a much more realistic update later in Chapter 3. Imagine the tiny chair swinging from your shotgun. I love this one, the Guided Missile. The most requested vaulted item in Fortnite history. Well, if you don't include the Zapatron. This item has not been in the game for years and it still remains unaccessible in creative. The guided missile was introduced back in March 2018 and permanently vaulted in February 2019. We are fast approaching its third anniversary of its removal and that hasn't stopped any of us begging for its return. A rocket that can be manually controlled and freely used to rocket ride your friends it's something we need to return Epic. So please, in chapter three, do the right thing. Here's something completely left field. Players have requested a kill cam to be introduced into Fortnite and potentially a play of the game mechanic. A kill cam has been a staple of the Call of Duty series for years. Once we meet our demise, the game records that moment and shows you it from your opponent's point of view. This is a great way to see how you lost the fight and how to improve in future. And it's instant, you'll see exactly what happened without having to go back into replay mode. And if you're an Overwatch fan, you'll already be used to the second part of that request, a play of the game. Following the match, an epic moment would be displayed for all to see, like a mini highlight reel for you and your buddies to enjoy. Implementing that in Fortnite could be difficult, as not many people stick around to the end after being one pumped by a dude in a box. But the kill cam though, that would be the perfect iteration from chapter two to chapter three. Who's down for a kill cam? Next is weekly map updates. I'll be honest, as a map update guy, I've had my work cut out this year looking for map changes and the impact of the story. Some have been awesome and some have been watching a chair shrink and grow again. Hmm. And sometimes the map would only change once a month. Those are really tough times. Back in chapter one, and in particular season nine and X, the map continued to evolve at an amazing pace. Every single week, both big and small updates could be seen. We had Gotham City, we had a slice of Pandora, and we watched the Seven build a new rocket, which played a huge part in the end of season event. Heck, we even saw the inhabitants of the island building a mech ready for the fight over the vault. The updates in 2019 were amazing. Please Epic Games, bring back weekly updates that inspire the community. And now the most requested update needed for chapter three, Creative 2.0. Creative 2.0 has been coming for a very long time now. Back in December 2018, Creative was first announced with a selection of creators invited to travel to Epic Games and make some stuff. At the time, it was revolutionary. But now three years later, games like Battlefield 2042 and the Portal mode have taken things to the next level. Thanks to Epic Games Unreal Engine and its integration into Fortnite UI, and also an entire year of testing, Creative 2.0 is ready to go. Epic spoke about this in 2020 and showcased live edits in game that could be seen by any player on any platform. It was simply mind blowing. And that was just the beginning. 
thanks to creator codes, this tool could realistically be a career path for anyone out there. So make sure you try it when it inevitably releases in Fortnite Chapter 3. So there we have it, 20 updates, ideas and concepts coming to Fortnite in Chapter 3. I'm Adam, you're awesome. And so are these guys, because they used my code this week. Thank you so much for using code Adamaru. Oh, that guy, that guy's my favourite. Oh, I like her. She's great. Names. Names are cool, aren't they? Is anyone still here? Hi, if you are. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See ya.